everyone. How are you doing today or tonight, depending on when you are watching this and listening to it? This is Roger, of course, with Groovis Games Unlimited, creator of Dungeon Crusade, and welcome to a very glorious and awesome and excellent weekend update. I am really fired up for this one, and just, if you saw the title, awesome news to report to you. First of all, I hope you guys are doing good, of course. I hope you're staying safe, enjoying these last days of summer. And, of course, welcome to the new subscribers. We're very happy that you're here, and we hope that you're enjoying all this crusade chaos that's going on. So, we're very happy that you're here. I want to get you right into this update. I want to be quick this time. I want to get going. Um, because I want to share... We're going to do the big news first. Then I want to share some stuff about the game, teach you some more about it, talk about this fellow right here, the toughest guardian in the game, Magmus. I don't think we really talked about him a lot. And so I think you'll have a good time learning about Magmus here and maybe one of his special abilities. And we're going to talk about um, his warfare values and a little bit about combat. As you know, I'm always trying to get you more acclimated to this. And I think for what I want, I'm going to say later on, I think you're really going to get this um, with combat. But we'll get to that. So welcome. So here is the box that um, they packed up the games in. As you know, we thought we were going to have the games last week. I was messaging our production manager, Flora, and again, you know me, I don't want to be too pushy with them, but these games are in the United States. Um, they arrived in the States late last night. The good news is, um, of course, you know me, I'm keeping track of all this. The, there's been the international release because, you know, it came from another country. That's all been cleared as of 3.29 a.m., to be exact, last night. So this is set for delivery Tuesday, uh, December, December, excuse me, uh, September 22nd, which is this Tuesday in the morning. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, what's going to go on? I have it all laid out for you. I think you're going to enjoy this, what everything that's coming down the pipeline. And um, so let's get into, I guess let's just shoot right over to that since that's what we're going to be talking about. And there's a bunch of other stuff too. Um, so we're going to be jumping around a lot, but let's do this first. So, um, well, we'll get over here and I'll tell you what's going on. Let's get into this first. And I have all this laid out already. Let me click this. Perfect, that worked. Okay, so when the games arrive on Tuesday, um, I was going to say more about this, but I just want to let you know, oh, you know what I was? Excuse me, I want to read you a message. And this is from Flora. Um, Hi, Roger, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. And I got this mid last week because I had messaged her a few times. Um, She's a very, very sweet girl, just so nice and awesome. Hi, Roger. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You know it's peak season for both on um, production and shipment, which, yes, they've been busy with a lot. Um, yes, she said you got everything. Um, tracking number is going to be sent to you. I'm skimming over this. And I thought it was very nice. She said, thank you so much for your kind waiting. And she said, even she knows this, please go to bed early and take good care of yourself. We are always here for you, no worries. That was very sweet of her to say, and I know it was very genuine. And I say again, if you're gonna design a game, go with Wingo Games. They're just every it's been an amazing experience and things like that, like a real personal level, because she knows how I, I never sleep. So I wanted to let you guys in on that. I always want to keep you up to date. Now let's go over here. I almost forgot that. So I have it all planned out for you guys, for us. What are what are we gonna do? when the games arrive on Tuesday. Okay, so when the games arrive on Tuesday, first thing I'm gonna do, of course, um, this will be in the morning, according to you know the information that was sent to me. We will have them in the morning. Of course, I'll bring the box in. I'm gonna make a video. Um, we're gonna unbox the shipping box and put everything out, okay? You know, we're getting the three editions of Dungeon Crusade, so, I planned it, um, I don't know, kind of like a schedule, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to film 
unboxing the shipping box, put all the three editions out and all of the add-ons. And I have to say, going back to this, that's a really big box. And it just seems like there's more in there than three editions of the game and the add-ons. I don't know. Maybe they put a lot of packing. We'll see. It'll be interesting to open. So I'm going to unbox everything, put it on the table. I'm going to shoot that video. I'm going to get down into the studio room. I'm going to get it all ready, get that video up for you guys so you can see the unboxing, okay? Upload that to the channel. Meanwhile, I'll be back upstairs, and then we're going to do a quick unboxing of each edition and add-on, okay? So I'll go back upstairs. We're going to open up everything, and I'm just going to not break it apart yet. Um, take everything out of the box and just kind of show you leave everything in the shrink wrap um, but you know just do a quick unboxing for you so when I get that done come back down in the studio get that uploaded for you um, you know send that up to the channel so while you're watching that I'm gonna go back upstairs and then we're gonna do a real in-depth unboxing of the master of the realm edition we're gonna break everything apart um, and then show I'm going to show you how to store everything. So if you remember this from one of the pictures, those are the storage containers. Those are going to be completely empty. So um, I'm doing this because, as I said, you know we're going to be doing the interactive video rulebook, and I said I'd be there with you guys through everything. So I want to show you how to store it all. You know, so this is going to be a lengthy video. So I hope that you know you'll enjoy it for the people that want to hang out with me. We're gonna take the game apart. That way when you get it, you can refer to this and like, okay, here's what he did here, here's what he did here. And I think it'll make a lot of sense. And I, I think a lot of people will enjoy it, okay? So we're gonna be doing that. So kind of like you can see, you know, I'll film this, get it uploaded, watch, you, you're you gonna be watching that. I'll be doing this, upload that, you can watch that. And then doing this is gonna take some time. But I would like to have all this up you know Tuesday for you so it's going to be incredibly busy on Tuesday morning day evening and into the night but I, I'm very excited for you mostly because I know how much you're looking forward to this so you know I'll be there the whole way with you guys so the unboxing is going to take some time um, I think it'll be fun and you'll see everything me punching out all the stuff um, you know, we'll chat while we're doing or whatever. So you can look forward to that. Now I'm going to turn this panel off and we're going to go to just kind of the steps of what's going to go to shipping. There's not many steps left guys. And, um, this is going to be going up very soon now that we have these proof copies. So let's switch our panels here to this. Okay. So after we do that, you know, you see the videos of the, the master of the realm unboxing and stored. Um, I have a team of people who are going to help go over each edition of the game for a few days. I want to reassure you of something that, and a lot of people know this, I worked incredibly close with the manufacturer on everything in this game. You, I think you know how hands-on I was because I wanted it perfect for all of us. They did an excellent job. I think this is going to be a very quick review of each one. You know, We're going to do some card counting. Um, I've already made a checklist and we're all going to go through it, double check it. From there, I mean, it it might not even be a few days, you know, but I'm saying at the most probably a few days. Okay, so the next step, I, you know, talk to Flora and give her the green light. Hey, everything's looking good for these additions. Yeah, you can go ahead, you know, get everything ready to forward to the fulfillment company. I had to start a new video there. So we give them the green light. All editions look good. And as you saw from the other video, um, they have everything packed up. It's wrapped up in the shrink wrap and all of that. So what they're going to do is, and they already have the boxes that they're putting everything into forward to the fulfillment service. They are going to deliver everything to them. The great thing is the fulfillment service is in the same town as the manufacturer so guys they're going to have this in one day's time that is the great thing that's going to speed things up dramatically okay so then it pretty much when this happens it's in a way out of our hands but i think you know that 
I will be keeping you up to date on anything small or big that happens. Um, I'm in close contact with our shipping manager. We've known each other for going on, I think, a year now. Um, Becky, she'll be giving me all the updates. I'll be giving those to you. So they deliver everything to the fulfillment service. Okay, same town. I already said that one day. When the fulfillment service gets this, and I just know this, how these things work, they move very quick. Um, they do the pick and pack, um, begins with shipping to follow. And pick and pack means, you know, they have the list of everyone's names, what you ordered, any add-ons, um, stuff like that. Remember we talked about the color coding of all the additions because, I, I, you know, I, we need to have a color coded system. So it's very easy for the workers to identify each edition of the game. They're going to pick and pack everything and put it into your shipping box that you will receive. And that, I know, that's the part that goes very, very quickly. Um, and they get moving on it. So then shipping to follow. And since this is coming out of, you know, over there on that side of the world, I'm 99.9% .9 sure in what I've been telling people. People, you guys over in France, um, Board Gamer 69 Laurent, I'm talking to you. I know, thank you for all your coverage, the excellent coverage you did on the game. I love you. You guys in France are going to see it first. Germany, the UK, Australia, all that side of the world is going to see the game show up first. Shortly after, all of us here in the US and our friends and backers in Canada will see the game shortly after. Okay? So that's how all of that is going to work and that's simply it guys and again she told me and if anything changes i'll let you know that you will see the game late november but before christmas so if anything changes of course i'll update you but that's what they've been saying and so now we have to go over to this panel here because this is going to the pledge manager is definitely going to be closing now I'm going to make big mention to this sold out thing here because I don't want this to go all hazy fantasy. We're going to come back to this. The pledge manager will be shutting down, of course, because this is shipping out. This will be kind of your last chance to pre-order the game, probably this coming week. All right. We're doing manual invites. If you would like to secure a copy of the game, um, message us through the Dungeon Crusade Facebook page or email, you know, some way and let us know that, you know, you would like to secure a copy. Now, I don't know why, guys, I can just see something's coming up the river. Yes, the Master of the Realm edition is sold out, but let me explain what that means. We had set aside like a quota of what could be sold for the manual invites. We have more editions of the Master of the Realm. Please understand that if you hear anything. We have more editions of the Master of the Realm that will be here. We're holding on to those to sell for later. So basically the sold out thing just means for manual invites, those are unavailable now. We've met our quota for that. Those are sold out. We will have some when everything ships. Crusader of the Realm is still available. Base edition, which is the Knight of the Realm, is available. Tons and tons of content in this. Add-ons are also available, but I have to get some updates on that. There's still some available, don't worry, but those might be, our quota might be getting close to those also, and we may have to turn some of those off. But what I want to say about that is, I had to start another video, but um, what I was saying is that um, someone had asked, the Master of the Realm Edition, I meant to say this before, what is the difference between all these editions? In case you don't know, you may know. Let's go over this real quick. Base edition, tons of content inside of this, okay? Um, when you move up to the Crusader of the Realm edition, you get the base edition plus the Avalon Adventure board game. And you get, of course, the one House of Chance game, Tower Attack. So remember that. Crusader of the Realm edition, you're going to get your base edition. You're going to get the Avalon Adventure board game and the base edition with Crusader of the Realm edition. 
For you backers who got the Master of the Realm Edition, you're getting the Crusader of the Realm Edition plus the extra three House of Chance games, which are the Adventures of Bravely the Knight, Skulljack, and Heroes vs. Monsters. So basically, if you know, if you just plan on playing Tower Attack on Celebration Day in the House of Chance, you know, that's what you're gonna be playing each time. My my point is the only difference between these two is you get those three extra House of Chance games. And a really nice guy, I think Axel, if you're I know you watch these, I think it was Axel, he asked me, Well, what if I got the Crusade of the Realm edition now? Will all those ha House of Chance games be available? And I wanna say I've said it many times with Groovis Games Unlimited, all content will always be available to everyone. You know me, I'm a hardcore gamer. I'm 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 just you know, I'm with you guys. I think it is totally crappy, excuse my French, when companies hold content back and, and make it, you know, OOP out of print. As far as I'm concerned, you will always have access to content. None of that limited offer for this. No. Everyone has a right to enjoy this content and I will make darn sure that this is always available for you. So Later on down the road, say we go back to Kickstarter for something, Plastic Minis, that's our next project. We're gonna have a nice package with those three House of Chance games that you can get. We will always have content available for you. I wanna stress that. So, um, so, if, so if you're someone who's interested in the Master of the Realm Edition, you can wait until we get the games. They may go fast at the rate everything's going. Um, but check back then um, and we'll see what we can do. But for right now, these two editions are totally available um, to pre-order with a manual invite, okay? And I think that's for it for this part. I want to get all of this out before talking about all like the stuff about the game so and just be more peppy and quick for you guys. So Tuesday uh, morning, uh, that's where we're going to get this in the unpacking and all the stuff we talked about here um, that will be going into effect. So a lot of stuff to look forward to. And again, you know, I apologize about the delay, but as I read that message, they're very busy there and we appreciate everything that the manufacturer has done for us. They've been outstanding. So before, so that's it. So if you want to hang around with me for just a little bit, I just want to talk to you about um, Magmus here, not there, I, this guy right here, the toughest guardian in the game. And this is just a poster when I was looking to put stuff together. This was uh, something I'd put together for a Kickstarter update. And I thought it was kind of cool to show you the uh, Lair of Red Widow. That's another one of the guardians. And you see some um, shadow dwellers here. That was a pretty cool image to show you. So um, what we're going to discuss now is, I don't think there was anything else I was going to say. Um, yeah, I showed you that, so we're going to go over that. So, um, Magmus here, he is one of the, well, he is the toughest guardian in the game. And, you know, there's eight guardians in the game, in the game presently, with more to follow in the expansion, or in the huge expansion for next year. This is Banevik. But something I want to share with you and kind of just, you know, kind of hit it home more for you with combat. Now I had this image here and I just put it over this texture here. So I'm sorry if it looks kind of rough, but I wanted just to get you more acclimated to this combat system because it's it's not hard at all, guys. Um, it's, I love the combat system. It's very fun. And so we're gonna discuss that a bit. All right, so Magmus here, because I don't think we really ever talked about him, but you know, I, I designed, um, or you know, like, created these eight guardians in the land of Avalon and I wrote backstories for each one, you know, like the lore of them. And I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but Magmus in particular, when you read his origins on his level one monster card, um, all guardians on level one don't have a special ability yet. They have their origin stories. And as they level up to level four, I created more deadly and um, just more powerful special abilities for each of the guardians. So you can expect Magmus is going to go up 
and always have different special abilities as all the guardians. But him in particular, here was an old poster that when we were revealing these, and, and Freddy Lopez, of course, the amazing artist. I worked with him on all of these um, monsters and creatures, and just he just did an amazing job. And I told Freddy kind of what you're seeing is like, this is what I pictured for Magnus. And of course, Freddy injected his own creativity and just what an incredible piece of fantasy art. So Freddy, I love you, thank you. Um, just amazing. But something, you know, I wanted to do is, you know, you always see these arch demons or, you know, a demonic creature and they got like a massive ax or a sword. And I wanted to have Magmus have this evil looking bow. You know, it's I thought it was very unique and, you know, not something that was so mundane. And all of the special abilities that I created for Magmus are very deadly. They're fun in a way to use, even though they're deadly, but they're they're cool special abilities that he has. And one in particular is when he hits level three and it's called um, Hellfire Arrow Barrage. And what you do is you take, um, now for level one, because remember on normal difficulty, because remember there's three difficulty decks, um, expert, and heroic difficulty are add-ons. So on, at the normal level um, for Hellfire Arrow Barrage, you roll six D6s, okay? And I know all this stuff by heart. So on every result that is four and higher of those D6s, and this, I'm sorry, this is on attack. So if Magmus attacks one of your heroes, you roll if this if this ability activates um you roll the six d6s and for every result that is four plus that hero loses one health and one essence now if you go up to expert and heroic that number that plus four is going to get lower like you know it'll go to plus three and then i believe it's the hero will lose for each you know success on one of those d6s they're going to lose two health and one essence. And then finally on heroic, um, it's the, the hero will lose, it's gonna even get lower and they're gonna lose two health and two essence. So, you know, I was kind of very, um, I was very OCD about the difficulties, but, you know, as I said before, you can expect, you know, everything to get tougher, more health on the monsters, their warfare values go up, the damage, they do goes up. So that's a little bit about Magmus. And you'll read on his origin story, um, like about the prophecy that was foretold about this arch demon that rose from the underworld to protect a certain group. And we're gonna get into that in the expansion. So Magmus is the toughest monster in the game. So let's go over here and just before we close out here and talk about combat. And again, let's screw this is kind of crude. I'd rather have a dungeon background, but I wanted to get this update out for you. So we're going to look at here. This is the combat chart. And I want to hopefully, my point for doing this is clear up some misconceptions and let you see, guys, this combat system is not hard to grasp at all. And it's, it's very fun. I think you're really going to enjoy this once you really get into it. Because there's dungeon combat, you know, like when the heroes are in the corridors and hallways of the dungeon and then there's chamber combat but we're going to talk about just this would be magmus if we had these heroes together you know we rallied these three heroes together to be our guardian hunters and i got to start another video bear with me okay and i want to make mention as some people have asked about defend now you can't see it but these are the warfare tokens well there's there's six warfare types in the land of Avalon, okay? Think of those as fighting styles. So underneath these tokens, they kind of like slide. The attack is up here and then defend. And there were some misconceptions about defend. So I want to clear that up and let you see. Hopefully, after I describe this, you're kind of, ah, okay, I get this combat system now. It's, it's not hard. It's very fun. Um, so Magmus, remember every hero or every monster every creature in the land of avalon is versed in three of the six warfare types if we look at magmus here 
He's versed in ranged warfare. It makes sense with this demonic bow. He's versed in arcane warfare. And he's versed in spiritual, like a corrupted, kind of like evil, you know, like spiritual that's, just, you know, is corrupted. So those are the three warfare types that he's versed in. Now, this is his level one stats for this. Notice 13, 2, 12, 1, 14, 2. Okay, so real simple. What this means is we looked at range, 14, 2. That means when a hero is combating Magnus with ranged warfare, we're going to look real quick here. See phase three. So Sir Brennus is going to be combating him in ranged warfare. You shuffle these tokens and lay them out, then you flip them over. So we can see Sir Brennus, see phase three token here. He's going to be combating Magmus in phase three. He chose to attack. And those are the warfare dice. Remember, D12, D6. So what he has to do is roll that number or higher to score a hit. And then you declare, um, and you can't really see it here because I didn't have the weapon. So let's say he had his, let's say he was equipped with a bow. Uh, there's a Ashwood bow. It does one damage. So he would put that token on his Ashwood bow, declaring, okay, I'm using this weapon. It's locked in to phase three, okay? So, and it does one damage. You roll the dice, the warfare dice for ranged warfare. So if, let's say he, well, okay, so he scored a 12 here. We would consult his hero card and any kind of, you know, charms or rings or necklaces he was wearing because some of that if you saw before gives bonuses we could add that to the result so let's say he had um a necklace on and it gave him a plus three to warn ranged warfare okay so 12 plus three is 15 he would score a hit that ashwood bow does one damage right we would put one hit marker on magnus let's say that you know this seven was a one which would be then you know a six even with three, that's nine. He failed to score a hit. So picture that as Magmus blocked that hit. You know, if a hero doesn't roll that, and that's how I think of it, you know, the monster blocked it. See the two? That means that Sir Brennus would take two damage. See, very easy. Not it, This is not hard at all. Now, I'm gonna get into, and we're gonna do a spotlight video after I do the Avalon Adventure Board Game, which I am working on. That's what I wanted to say. And I'm recording some new music I want to share with you for it. But we're going to be doing a, con a spotlight video on combat. But I think you're going to get a lot what I'm about to say. People had asked, okay, well, you know, why is there a defend? Let me explain something. Let's suppose that this is Korath, our war warlock hero, and here's Faith, our cleric. Let's say these two were not there. They didn't, you know, he didn't rally these two heroes. Because remember, that's something I wanted to accomplish in Dungeon Crusade is true party building. And that's something I think that's lacking in a lot of Dungeon Crawl games. You know, it makes sense. You, you build a party of heroes to take down tough monsters. And, and, and this worked out just perfectly in Dungeon Crusade, okay? So they're rallied together. You can rally up to three heroes. They're rallied together to take down Magnus. Let's say, and I don't recommend this, the, he, that Sir Brennus did not rally Faith or Korath. So they're gone. They're not here right now. It's just him. There's three phases of combat, right? Okay, so let's say that, and let's say he didn't have the shield in this hand right here. He had that Ashwood bow. Okay, so what is it? His right hand, he has an Ashwood bow. In his left hand, he has his worn longsword. That's his starting weapon, actually. Okay, so he has this, his worn longsword in his left hand. He's got two weapons, right? So if, say he was going to fight Magmus alone, he would get all of the battle tokens. You know, there's this is the attack side, then there's a blue side that looks similar to this, and that's for defend. So let's just say that he attacked. He's going to, of course, attack in phase three. This came up here. He would take his phase three battle token, put it on, you know, his ashwood bow okay that weapon is locked in you can only attack in one phase you know per weapon that's locked in so let's just say you know he had his worn long sword you can attack in other you know in other phases of combat that even if it comes up spiritual or arcane but it makes sense but he's not versed in that he's not proficient 
he's going to be using a physical warfare weapon, which is red, you know, the red dice because it's a sword. So he's going to be at a disadvantage and it makes total sense. So let's say for phase two, he had the battle token. He's going to put it on his worn longsword. Of course, he can't add anything with physical warfare because this is spiritual. However, let's say that he had a necklace like that necklace we were talking about. Let's say it said plus three to spiritual warfare rolls. He could add that then because it's a, you know, it's geared. It's he's more proficient than in spiritual warfare. So he could add a plus three to the to the orange dice, spiritual warfare dice. Okay, so we put, you know, the phase two token on the Ashwood bow. He's out of hands, right? He's out of weapons. He will have to defend in phase one. So we would take the green token and slide it down. I think that totally made sense, hopefully, if you got that. Okay, so that's how that kind of works. You can't, you know, use one weapon across all of them. One weapon per phase and you lock it in. And remember, each you know phase of combat, these are shuffled, so you never know what's going to come up. And again, about party building, you want to build an effective. Let's say this was our guardian hunting party, and we have you know Faith, Korath, and um, Sir Brennus. This is for fighting Magmus. This is an incredibly good um, you know party of heroes because Korath is ver he's our warlock. He's versed in um, arcane warfare he's you know he has a staff he's got you know he's proficient in arcane warfare he's going to push the attack in phase one he's most likely going to score a hit faith is our cleric she's versed in spiritual warfare she's going to attack in phase two and again we're going to say that um, Sir Brennus had that Ashwood bow it's a ranged warfare weapon he would declare that these heroes have an excellent chance of you know, inflicting damage on Magmus. Now, if you put someone like Paloom, the rogue, in here, and even our barbarian hero, um, Maheliak, they would not do good against him because Paloom is versed in mythical warfare. Um, Maheliak, the barbarian, is versed in chaos warfare. That would be a terrible fit. They're, they're not proficient to handle a, a monster like Magmus. These three are. Again, I hope that you understand. I hope I cleared that up. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is, since there's three heroes, every if you rally three heroes, each hero has to participate in a, a round of combat. Okay, you can't have Sir Brenna say, "Hey guys, I'm going to just chill in the back. Go ahead and take Magmus down and wake me when it's over." All heroes must participate. One last thing I want to touch on is on defend, and no spoilers. There, you're going to meet some of these creatures and monsters in the game are going to have some special abilities that will force a hero to defend. I don't want to go any further than that. Um, if, if you remember, we looked at the succubus. She's got a special ability called Fatal Charm. If your hero is charmed, they may have to defend. So just know, defend, yes, it comes in at certain parts of the game. But above all, when you get this game... And especially when I do, like, we do some live action with the combat spotlight video. If you have not, I, this pretty much laid it out what we just talked about right here. But when you see it actually in action, um, you're going to get it. And I can link actually a really good demo from a little while back of combat. Um, it was very reckless what I did. But um, I've sent that to some people and they're like, you know what, I got it now. So may I put that in the description for you. Okay, I had to start another video and we're going to wrap it up. But hopefully, um, yeah, I said, man, I'll put that uh, really good video that shows, um, who was it? I think it was, I think it was Enwin the Archer and Zeke the Wizard. And they were level one and I sent them into a chamber to fight um, a level two monster and it was revealed and it was a keeper of the faith. But it was a very good, it was reckless gameplay, absolutely. And um, I won't tell you what happened, but it shows the fun and the challenge and the uncertainty of going into a chamber um, to see what will happen. Okay, guys, so we're going to wrap it up with this. We talked about that. Um, manual invites are available for these two editions of the game. And we talked about this. And you know what I didn't? We'll end with this. Perfect. 
you saw this at the beginning. I, f I totally forgot to talk about this. This is a poster I put together, did some graphic design on, and it's on, I think, the Kickstarter page, and now you're seeing it here, and I'm glad I actually remembered this. So I put this together trying to capture a lot of aspects of the game, you know, like the House of Chance and, you know, the monsters and the angels in the game. <clears throat> when you receive a blessing, there's a hero card, um, you know, and it's a little bit of like kind of the gameplay of it, the land of Avalon. So I thought it came out pretty nice. But what I wanted to say is that I have been incredibly busy with just even stuff with family, getting stuff done for them, working in the studio room. I have some really awesome new music I'm going to be sharing with you for the Avalon Adventure um, board game spotlight video, but we're going to take an in-depth look at Avalon. And I've just been working. It's just been so busy, guys. Honestly, it's like it has been really crazy busy. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire, as they say, but we're getting it done. Um, so, but my point is for the new spotlight videos, I, I want to change it up a bit. I think this is getting a little like, you know, I just want to do something new for you guys. So, um, you'll see a new format for the new spotlight videos for definitely the combat we'll have and the Avalon, you know, the in-depth look at Avalon. So I'm just busy guys working on a lot of stuff, but some awesome stuff down the road for all of us. Okay. And I guess we'll fade out with this. Love you guys. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you know you got a lot of about combat. I hope I cleared some things up. It's not hard at all. It really isn't. Um, and I just think you're really going to enjoy once you get this in front of you. And even if you watch that little demo I'll have in the description, you're going to see the fun that can be had with the combat in this game and building rallying heroes to go out to be guardian hunters to hunt these guardians down. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, guys, um, I'm going to see you Tuesday, right? That's when all this is going to be um, arriving. I am so excited to break this open and play it and just do all this other stuff with you. Um, so, and Yolo's next to me and she just yawned, so I don't know if you heard that. Um, so, really, thank you for your time. I hope you have a great Sunday, and I look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday, and it's going to be a fun time. All right, guys. Take care, have a good day, and I'll be talking to you very soon. Bye-bye.